let's go ahead and get started. So far in class, we've learned about a few concepts. And today we're going to talk about capacitors. And one of the ways that you can think about capacitors are that they are a charge storing device. And the way that they accrue this charge or the way that you can put charge on a capacitor is by putting a voltage across it. So when a voltage is applied, to a capacitor, the capacitor can store charge. The amount of charge that a capacitor can store or that is stored on a capacitor is related by this equation, QVC. So Q is the charge, V is the voltage that you apply to the capacitor, and capital C is the capacitance of the capacitor. So you've already seen charge and voltage, and we'll talk about capacitance in a second. So the capacitance of a capacitor can be determined using this equation. So this is the capacitance. And one way you can think about capacitance is just how good a capacitor is at storing charge. This is called the dielectric constant. And I'll come back to that in a moment. This epsilon naught is called the permittivity of free space. This is the area of the capacitor. And this is the distance between the plates of a capacitor. And so for this class, we're just gonna focus on what are called parallel plate capacitors. And so uh, from, let's do a couple different views. So from the side, you might have something that looks like this. 
where these are the two plates of your capacitor. And they're separated by this distance D. And then uh, if we just look at one plate of the capacitor, uh, then it could look like a square. So if you take two squares of material and you separate them by some distance D and you apply a voltage difference across the plates of the capacitor, uh, then you can store charge on this kind of device. Um, So this permittivity of free space, so this is just a constant. And it equals Eight point eight five times ten to the minus twelve and the units on this are going to be farads divided by meters. And so the the variable for capacitance that we use is capital C, and the unit for capacitance is capital F. And this is a farad. Now, the last term that we haven't talked about yet is the dielectric constant. And so this depends on the material. So for example, if you had this, these two plates of the capacitor and you had this set up in a vacuum, then the dielectric constant between the two plates would be equal to one. If you had air in between the two plates of your capacitor, then it's a little more than one. It's like 1.0006 1 And so you, as you add different materials into your into the space between your plates of your capacitor, then you just need to multiply. Uh, an extra factor in here to change the capacitance. Uh, so the minimum that you can have is for a vacuum, and that would be a dielectric constant of one. And then as you add different materials, you'll get some dielectric constant that's greater than one. I will just take an aside to talk about the permittivity of free space. And that's this epsilon naught term. Uh, you also might see it like that. Maybe I should write it like that. And so what this is, uh, how, how to think about this in a conceptual way is how easy 
is it for an electric field to exist And so this part about free space just means in a vacuum. So you saw that if we take the dielectric constant of something, we can multiply it by the permittivity of free space. And in essence, what we're doing then is just finding the permittivity of some material. So if we used, for example, uh, the dielectric constant of paper is 3.7, then if we plug 3.7 into this equation, and plug in what we had for the permittivity of free space, we could calculate the dielectric constant of, or the permittivity of paper. And so if we do that, we get Three point two seven times ten to the minus eleven farads per meter. And so, in a problem, you might be given the uh, dielectric constant. Or you might just be given the permittivity of that material to start with. And so if you're given the permittivity of paper and they say it's 3.27 times 10 to the minus 11, uh, then what that means is, or what that value is, trying to convey to you is how easy for it is it for an electric field to exist in paper. So if we look back at our equation for capacitance, we could either write it this way, or we could write it this way. And so you would use, uh, to figure out which one of these equations to use, uh, you would have to read the problem and see if it's giving you a dielectric constant, in which case you would use this equation, or if it gives you the permittivity of the, uh, of the material, then you would use this equation. And then one final thing to note is that we've kind of already seen this uh, permittivity of free space, uh, but it's, it was written in a different way. way. So we've seen this constant K, uh, which was for Coulomb's law, Long constant. And that was 8.99 times 10 to the minus, or 10 to the nine. And so this is related to the permittivity of free space uh, in the following way. So the Coulomb constant is equal to one over four pi times the permittivity of free space. So if you plug this into your calculator, 
you should recover the 8.99 times 10 to the nine number. And if you do plug that into your calculator, you do get that value. Uh, so you can kind of use these interchangeably and maybe I'll do that on the next slide. Um, and you might be wondering where this four pi term comes from. Uh, and this is from, this is kind of a consequence of calculus. So you don't really need to know where it comes from for this class, but uh, if you need to use this formula, then you have to remember to include the four pi. Uh, so as I was saying, we can use Coulomb constant and uh, permittivity of free space interchangeably. So you might see so you might see Coulomb's law written like this. Or you might see it written like And conversely, we had capacitance is K epsilon naught area over distance. But you could also write that with the K constant if you divided it by four pi. Uh, but then uh, you can kind of see where that might be a bit of an issue because you've got this dielectric constant, which we kind of write as like a cursive K. And then you've got the Coulomb constant, which we write as a, neg a regular K. And so that might be a bit confusing. So uh, that would be one reason to avoid writing it like this. But as long as you're clear with what your variables are, then you could write it like this and it would be a valid equation. Uh, so the takeaway from this is mainly for the Coulomb law, you might see it written in either of these two ways, and they're both correct. Uh, but we usually will only write the capacitance this way. So any questions about that? Okay, and then uh, kind of a conceptual takeaway from this equation. for capacitance. If you, so you can increase capacitance 
by increasing the dielectric constant, increasing the area of the plate of the capacitor, or decreasing the separation between the plates of the capacitor. You can decrease the capacitance by decreasing the dielectric constant, by decreasing the area of the plates, or by increasing the separation distance of the plates. Uh, so this kind of conceptual thing is something that you might see on a multiple choice question on an exam or something like that. So one other uh, conceptual thing about parallel plate capacitors is that when I apply a potential difference across these two plates, what will happen is I will get an excess of positive charges on one side and an excess of negative charges on the other side. And so what happens in the middle is that we get a uniform electric field. So in between the plates of a parallel capacitor, there is a uniform electric field. And so what uniform means is that if I pick a point here or here or here, it doesn't matter where I am, the electric field will be the same at all of those points. So uniform just means that it doesn't depend on location. Now, uh, you might see problems that are written like, uh, you like assume the area is much larger than the separation distance or assume an infinitely large capacitor. And so all that means is that just assume that the electric field is constant. Uh, because in real life, your capacitor is not infinitely large. And so at the edges of your capacitor, you might get some, uh, some fields that kind of, uh, they're no longer uniform. Uh, but this is, uh, maybe I'll do it in a different color. So these are fringe effects. And we're not going to be worrying about those in this class. So next, you might be wondering how do we apply a voltage to 
a capacitor. So now we're going to start talking about circuits. And so what I'm about to draw is called a circuit diagram. So whenever you see two parallel lines like this that are different lengths, this is your voltage source. And so usually like this, this is gonna be a battery. And it'll typically be labeled, let's say this is a 10 volt battery. Then when you see two parallel lines that are the same length, this is the symbol for a capacitor. And they'll typically be labeled. And let's say that this one is a five nanofarad capacitor. Then everything else that's just a solid line, you can just think of that as like a wire or something that's some conducting material that's connecting everything together. So this was parallel lines of different lengths. Capacitor was parallel lines of same length. And so if this is the circuit diagram that you're given, then we can calculate the charge stored on this capacitor using the QVC equation. So the charge would be 10 volts times five times 10 to the minus nine farads. So this would be 50 times 10 to the minus nine coulombs or 50 nano coulombs. Uh, so in this diagram, I just have one voltage source and one capacitor. But there's nothing to say that we can't connect multiple capacitors to the same voltage source. And so there are two different ways to do that. Uh, so there are series circuits. and there are parallel circuits. So in a series circuit, all of the elements in the circuit just follow one after the other. So an example of that, so here's our voltage source. You could have any number of capacitors like that, and this would be considered a series circuit. On the other hand, a parallel circuit would look like this. And so the big difference between these two pictures is that if I were to travel along the wires of the series circuit, I can't 
go any other I can't take any other path. There's only one uh there's only one way around this circuit. But in this one in the parallel circuit, I could go around this way and end up at the same place that I started. Or I could go around this way. And I haven't touched each element of the circuit. If I go around the blue path, then I don't touch, let's maybe give these a, some numbers. So the blue path, I only go through the eight nanofarad capacitor, but along the red path, I only go through the 10 nanofarad capacitor. It's important to be able to tell these apart because the way that we handle the capacitors is going to depend on whether they're connected in series or in parallel. So in series, to get the total equivalent capacitance of all of these capacitors, let's say C1, C2, you add them all up uh, in this way. However, for a parallel circuit, we'll call this C1 and C2, the equivalent capacitance is just C1 plus C2. And so the CEQ is called equivalent capacitance. And I'll work an example of this on the next slide. Uh, but what we're going to do with it is now this gets plugged into our QVC equation. So if, if there's only one capacitor, you can just do charge equals voltage times the capacitance. But if there's multiple capacitors, you first need to find the equivalent capacitance, and then you can multiply by the voltage to determine the charge. So let's do a couple of simple examples. So for a series circuit, let's say we have a 10 volt battery and we've got a 10 nanofarad capacitor and another 10 nanofarad capacitor. So if we want to know the total charge stored, what we first need to do is find the equivalent capacitance. So because these are in series, the equivalent capacitance, we have to do this in this reciprocal formula. So one over 10 nanofarads plus one over 10 nanofarads. Uh, maybe I'll do a different, no, I'll, maybe I'll do two different examples. So since they're both the same fraction, we can just add the numerators. And then to solve for the equivalent capacitance, we just flip the, the fractions over. So now we have 10 nanofarads over two. So that would be an equivalent capacitance of 10 or of five nanofarads. So now to figure out the total charge, we take our voltage, multiply it by the equivalent capacitance, and we would get 10 times 5 times 10 to the minus 9, so 50 nanocoulombs. 
And so another way of thinking about this map that we just did, if we, we could redraw our circuit diagram. And instead of having two 10 nanofarad capacitors, uh, we could think of this as a circuit with just one nanofarad capacitor or one five nanofarad capacitor. Then let's do an example of capacitors in parallel. So if we have a 10 volt battery, and then we take those same 10 nanofarad capacitors and we put them in parallel, Now our equivalent capacitance is just adding them together. Then finding the total charge, we take the voltage times the equivalent capacitance and we would get 200 nano coolers. Or another way to think about this is you redraw your circuit diagram and you replace the two 10 nanofarad capacitors with one 20 nanofarad capacitor. Not always either one or the other. Some circuits might have a combination of parallel and Uh, series circuits. And so the strategy for this is to uh, combine your series elements first, and then worry about your parallel So the equivalent capacitance for the red part is one over five plus one over 10 nanofarads. Uh, so to add these fractions together, we need to multiply this first one by two. So we would get three over 10 for the one over equivalent capacitance. And so to get the equivalent capacitance of the red thing, we need to flip this fraction over. And so the equivalent capacitance would be 10 thirds of a nanofarad. Then the equivalent capacitance for the blue term, or for the blue, here, maybe I'll, I'll redraw it. So now we have this picture. 
where now this is a 10 over 3 nanofarad capacitor, and this is a 2 nanofarad capacitor. And so the equivalent capacitance of this, we just add the two together, and we can change this into a fraction. So 10 thirds plus six thirds would give you 16 over three nanofarads. So the final picture would just be your 10 volt battery and your 16 over three nanofarad capacitor. And there's one more equation that we need. And it's related to the energy stored on a capacitor. And so the energy stored on a capacitor is QV over two. And another way to write that is, so we know the Q equals VC equation. So you can write different permutations of this by uh, substituting in this QVC equation. Uh, so this could be equal to C V squared over two or Q squared over two C. Uh, 